Okay. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the October Wikipedia and Education User Group Open Meeting. Um, this is our uh, I would say every other month-ish um, opportunity for us to connect with the education community more broadly um, around the world and have an opportunity for people to share what they've got going on. Um, and so we will start with introductions. I can introduce myself. Um, I am Leanna Davis. I am from the United States. I am part of Wiki Education. And um, I'm also in my role here as chair of the Wikipedia and Education User Group. Um, and so I will go through and um, call people as they appear on my list of participants here. And I apologize in advance if I mispronounce your name. And I will start with Thomas, who is first on my list here. Good morning, guys. Um, so yes, my name is Thomas Shaffey. I'm based down in Melbourne in Australia currently. Um, and my current background is that I'm a, a, an academic and um, research support worker um, at the University of La Trobe. So my, my academic background is in biochemistry. Um, but I have a range of activities that I do in, in research support these days. Um, and in particular, I've picked up a whole load of Wikipedia interests and side activities since my PhD. Okay, thank you, Thomas. And Thomas will be one of our uh, guest speakers as well uh, today. Susanna. Okay. Hi everyone, I am Susanna. Uh, I am from Armenia, uh, the uh, chair of Wikimedia Armenia. Also, I am um, a board member of uh, Wikipedia and Education User Group. Uh, I used, uh, I am uh, on scientific research. I am PhD of uh, computer science. Uh, also, I am working uh, on um, um, uh, how to use educa uh, Wikipedia in education to uh, in enhance education, not <laughs> just Wikipedia. <laughs> so, um, this is all. Okay, thanks, Susanna. Alex. Hey, uh, my name is Alex. I am based in Toronto, Ontario. Uh, I was Wikipedia and residence here for a while and then currently work as a technology specialist. Um, I do a lot of work sort of at the intersection of like Wikipedia, well, both Wikipedia and Wikidata at the moment, um, and where it uh, leads a lot into pedagogy and uh, just general skill share and skills development in the library space as well as the university space. Um, so it goes in a lot of different directions, but I'm excited to hear what you have uh, been working on and yeah, the projects looks super, super cool. Okay, thanks Alex and welcome. Amanda. Hi everyone, my name is Amanda. I use she, her pronouns and I'm based in Boston, Massachusetts in the United States. I work at Northeastern University with Amy. Um, <clears throat> And I'm a librarian by training. Um, I've been working with classroom assignments where students contribute to Wikipedia for close to seven or eight years now. Um, and we have started looking at Wikidata as another fantastic place for classroom assignments. So nice to see you all. And Amanda is another one of our guest speakers today, along with Amy, who is conveniently alphabetically next. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Amy. So yeah, I'm also based in Boston right now um, and working at Northeastern University Libraries. Um, my educational background, I did computer science in undergrad and went to library school. And I've been like editing Wikipedia and Wikidata for a while for fun. And now I get to do it in a work context as well. So that's great. Thanks, Amy. Philip. Hi, I'm Philip. I'm from Serbia. I'm a Wikipedia since 2004 or five, um, so quite old. Um, and yeah, I'm a board member of Wikimedia Serbia and also the Wikipedia and Education User Group. And I have a newfound love of Pecan, 
uh, nuts. So maybe a random fact. <laughs> I, I also love pecans, so <laughs> sounds great. Uh, Francesc. Yeah, hello everyone. Sorry, I don't have a camera. My name is Francesc. I live in Valencia in Spain. I'm a veteran member of the Catalan Wikipedia. And let's say that here in Valencia, I've been a Wikimedia. And I believe that I've done almost everything in, in the local basis and in a voluntary basis. And well, here I am a little bit curious. So let's see what, what we can discover today. Sounds great. Thank you. Jackie. Oh, thank you. No camera today also, but uh, really happy to be here. I'm Jacqueline Bucio from Mexico City. I'm working in education program with Wikimedia Mexico. Good to see you all. Thank you. Joao. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you all. This is Joao speaking from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm currently the chair and coordinator of the Brazilian Wikimedia affiliate, Wikimovimento Brazil. I'm also a board member of Wikipedia and Education, and I'm very interested in the discussion today as I'm, uh, and if you need information, this is why I'm saying this, I'm the co-coordinator of Wikidatacon 2021. So I hope we can discuss tons of Wikidata today. Absolutely. And um, as one of the uh, co-curators uh, of the education and science track for Wikidatacon, I will be plugging uh, everyone who is doing Wikidata work and education's participation uh, coming up here. And when I am able to dig up a link, uh, I will put it in the chat to encourage everyone to uh, submit a session for that. Uh, Clara. Uh, hi everyone, I think I'm the first one, first, first time here, but I know some of you. <laughs> uh, I'm the coordinator of uh, educational uh, team in Wikimedia Polska. I'm based close to Warsaw in Poland. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm the Wikipedia, Wikipedia and I'm since 2015, so not so old, but I really tried everything like Wikibooks, Wikisource, Wikidata also. And I'm here mainly because I also trying to, um, uh, to include Wikidata like basic tape, tape labels into our uh, educational um, program because this is something that I can explain and do. And also I'm in the um, committee, I don't know how to say it, we, we, uh, we are trying to make a wiki week uh, in January, February, and I'm one of the co-organizer uh, in this international team. So maybe we will have some inspiration how to include this subject into this. Great, I think the more we can do about Wikidata and education, the better from, from my perspective anyway. Rachel. Hello, I'm the Wikipedian in residence at the Brigham Young University Library. I've been here for over five years now. Um, I've helped professors when they have WikiEDU assignments. Sometimes I'll go and present to their class. And uh, I was briefly part of the Wiki Journal of Humanities. I helped with that for like a year or two. So that's how I know Thomas. Great, thanks, Rachel. Sandeep. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sandeep. I'm from India. Uh, currently, I'm pursuing PhD in education. I have joined Wikipedia since 2019. Uh, I'm Punjabi Wikimedian. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, Zico. So at the end of the alphabet, <laughs> it's me. Hello, I'm Zico van Dijk. I'm a German who lives in the Netherlands. I'm on the board of the EduWiki user group. Uh, I run a YouTube channel about wikis and Wikipedia. And uh, I'm also one of the founders of the Clexicon, which is a wiki encyclopedia for children in the age from 8 to uh, 14 years. And we're going to expand it to other languages. So if any one of you is interested in a children's encyclopedia written by adults, but for children uh, in your language, please welcome to the Clexicon. 
Thanks, Zico. And it looks like Mary joined us midway through. Mary, do you want to introduce yourself? And apologies, I had muted you because I think you had some background noise there. So feel free to unmute yourself. Mary? Okay, perhaps Mary isn't there, or if you can hear us, uh, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat to everyone. Um, okay, so I want to briefly talk about what we have going on in the user group as an update for everyone. Um, and once we will do, once I'm done with that, we will move into um, our guest presentations. Um, so it's been, I would say, a slower time in our user group. Um, we tend to wind activities down around now and um, take a bit of a break for the end of the year and pick stuff up um, in the beginning of the new year. So this is our final open meeting of the, um, of the year, but I do, uh, I, I am very excited to have an ongoing project that we've been doing around mentorship. So this is something we've been wanting to do since we formed this user group um, years ago now um, to put together um, existing education program folks who have lots of experience in different areas with newcomers who are interested in learning more about it. Um, and so we did a call for mentors or mentees or people who wanted to serve in both roles potentially. Um, at the beginning of the year, and we got a number of people volunteered, and we paired them up um, several months ago and just did a check-in, and it sounds like a lot of the mentorship um, pairs are going quite well, and, um, and both parties are getting a lot out of it. So we're really excited to hear that kind of preliminary results that things are going well in the mentorship. Um, the formal pilot sort of runs through the end of the year, and we will do a survey at that point of the mentors and mentees um, to to see kind of how things are going and if they want to continue. And if it looks like it's a successful initiative, um, it's something that I think we definitely want to continue and perhaps expand out. So um, if you are not participating in this round of the mentorship program, uh, look for emails beginning next year, assuming things continue to go well um, in, our, in our pilot phase right here um, to expand out and do more uh, mentor and mentee relationships, which I think is a, is a really important way to help build knowledge in our broader Wikipedia education uh, movement. So without further ado, I will, um, I will, I guess, any questions about um, stuff that's going on in the user group? Hearing none, I will turn it over to Thomas, who is our first guest speaker. Um, and many special thanks to Thomas, who is joining us at 3 a.m. his time. Um, this is an awkward time of the night um, for everyone. We, we try to pick a, a time that is most useful for, for those of us on the board, but uh, that does end up being a challenge for our participants um, for, from the sort of ECF region. And so we particularly thank Thomas for his dedication in getting up in the middle of the night uh, to give us a brief presentation before he goes back to bed. Um, so, so with that, Thomas, I will turn it over to you and feel free to screen share if you would like to. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, so yeah, no worries. It's, um, it's one thing that I'm used to. There's no good time that allows people from the US and Europe and Asia Pacific to all meet at once. And I have found myself outvoted on doodle polls about when to meet more than once, so no problem at all. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about uh, a particular project today um, that I think is really related to the sorts of work that the, uh, the, 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 this education focused user group is doing, and I guess it's sort of um, in many ways the research flip side of that. Um, thinking kind of in a, a tertiary education um, sort of setting. So um, you guys are probably familiar with this kind of a this kind of a diagram that shows some of the different ways in which Wikipedia is. Uh, interacting with outside partners, particularly those, this is this is an example that's kind of medicine specific, um, and it's a few years out of date by now, but it gives you an idea of, you know, some of the different uh, aspects being, being done. 
Um, and obviously, you know, you guys are very well aware of a lot of the work that's being done in um, educational settings. Um, but I'm going to look a little bit today at the scholarly journals interactions as this kind of way of bridging the divide between Wikipedia and the academic ecosystem. Uh, because it's a divide that I've always been kind of surprised by. Um, kind of thinking naively about it, I would have expected that Wikipedia in particular would be swarming with university researchers who are looking to try and keep it up to date on whatever their topic of interest is. Um, and in general, don't particularly see that. Um, and I think part of it is because of um, the particular kind of job pressures within academia to publish or perish and contribution to Wikipedia just does, is not formally rewarded within the, the traditional academic job structure. Uh, and so there are a few academic journals that have been experimenting with ways to interact with Wikipedia. Uh, and this really dates back, in, to my knowledge, back to 2008, when there was a journal of RNA biology that started requiring authors to create a Wikipedia page for um, a, 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 if they were publishing a, a journal article on a new RNA gene family to also create a Wikipedia page to be um, put online at the same time. And this was, uh, I think, expanded in 2012 by a different journal, PLOS Computational Biology, um, that took this one step further with publishing what they called a, a topic page review format. But essentially, it was the journal going out to authors and saying, write us uh, an academic article, but completely in the style of a Wikipedia page. We'll put it through peer review, we'll publish it in the journal, um, and then if it passes, or it, you know, if it passes peer review, we'll publish it in the journal, and then we'll copy it across into Wikipedia. Um, uh, Open Medicine in 2014 was the first journal to do this, but in reverse. So uh, it took the Wikipedia page on dengue fever um, and the main contributors to that submitted it to the journal um, and it was then put through their standard academic peer review pipeline and again was finally published with revisions um, in the journal. So kind of a, um, a quality assurance and quality checking mechanism. Uh, and so in 2014, similarly, uh, the Wiki Journal of Medicine then launched and the wiki journals have subsequently expanded into multiple um, sister journals, including Wiki Journal of Science and Wiki Journal of Humanities, which, which launched in 2018. But these journals really specialize in these various formats. So um, what I mean by that is the journal first format, where an article is submitted to the journal and then either copied in whole or in part over to Wikipedia, or it, uh, an article is written in Wikipedia first, maybe over multiple uh, years or these days, you know, multiple decades um, by a number of authors. And then uh, one or more of those authors submit that to the journal. And again, after being published in the journal, changes get integrated back into Wikipedia. Um, or on occasion, this sort of parallel publishing model where uh, a highly technical article is submitted to the journal as a partner item to the more broadly, uh, broad readership focused Wikipedia page. Uh, and so when you end up with um, this kind of journal first model, or even the Wikipedia first model, um, you end up with something that looks a little bit like this. So on the left is uh, the PLOS computational biology article. This was the first in their topic page series, and this is circular permutation and pro proteins. So on the left is the version that appears in the journal, and on the right is the version that appears in Wikipedia. Um, and their content uh, back in 2012 was uh, nearly identical. Um, so it, it was copied essentially in whole over to the Wikipedia page. And obviously the journal version has stayed the same since then. It's a stable version of record, but the Wikipedia version that was seeded 
has continued to evolve over time as new research has come out and new examples have been um, uh, published. Um, and so down at the bottom in the references section, it indicates that um, this particular Wikipedia page, uh, even though obviously, um, as you will be very well aware, you are unable to cite Wikipedia in most um, scholarly and academic formats um, because it's a tertiary resource uh, and it changes constantly. Um, you can instead uh, look back at a snapshot of it uh, at a particular point in time and know that that version of it, although it may be out of date, um, was a version that had been through external review. So currently there are three wiki journals with a fourth starting up. I mentioned that the first was in medicine and then subsequently science and humanities journals were spun up. Um, and there is a psychology, psychiatry and behavioral sciences journal planned for later this year or early next year. And they also share a preprint server. Um, so this is something that's kind of becoming increasingly common in academic writing where uh, you can upload your draft article uh, to somewhere where other researchers can read it uh, whilst it is undergoing peer review. So people can still see it before it's finished the peer review process. Uh, so obviously we uh, mark them up so that it's clear when you're reading an article whether, you, whether it's finished peer review or whether it's still undergoing it. Um, and so the Wikipedia, the wiki journals have a, a number of relatively unusual features. Um, so the first kind of pair that go together are the fact that it's open access, so it's free to read, but it's also free to publish in, so the authors don't have to pay anything. Um, and this is different to the typical models that are seen in, in academic publishing. So the, the traditional model is this paywalled version where uh, you either have to pay per article or your university will have a subscription to the um, to the journal so the reader pays. Um, the more uh, recent model that has come about is this gold open access journal model where instead the author pays uh, usually around a couple of thousand dollars to have the article published in the journal uh, but then of course it is free to read and also um, almost invariably Creative Commons licensed uh, with, with some version of, of a Creative Commons license. Uh, and so what the wiki journals do is we take um, a, a version of this that uh, is sometimes called Diamond Open Access, uh, where we have a supporting institution that pays. And so for, for the wiki journals, that's the Wikimedia Foundation, which supports us through um, initially rapid grants. We ran on two year, uh, uh, $2,000 rapid grants for a few years, and we have now got a, a, an annual grant to support us. Um, but of course, um, it's, you know, it's been long established that for academic publishing, you know, authors donate their time for, um, uh, by writing the articles, reviewers donate their time by reviewing the articles and often um, editors will donate their time by um, organizing the, the process and doing uh, various copy editing tasks. Um, and so usually publishers are taking a, 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 a skimming a profit off the top of that in order to um, support their own activities. So we just extend uh, our volunteer labor a lot deeper into the process than is typical for, for a standard publisher. So on top of this, um, another unusual feature that we do is public peer review. Uh, and what that means is that all peer reviewer comments are publicly viewable uh, because we're a wiki and surprisingly we do that on the discussion page. Um, and also uh, these days about 70 to 80% of our peer reviewers also choose to have their identity open as well. And even when the peer reviewer uh, wishes to remain anonymous, we also include their fields of expertise so that it's possible for readers to know uh, roughly what aspects of a paper have been most thoroughly checked. Um, and finally, I think the most interesting to this kind of community is the Wikipedia integration aspects. So I, I've mentioned the kind of the history of those ideas in, in other journals. Um, and so one of the things that um, 
I think is most interesting in the wiki journals is the submission from Wikipedia, because uh, I mentioned that, uh, that the um, Journal of Open Medicine did this with dengue fever, but other than that, that was the only other example that I know of, of an existing Wikipedia page being submitted to an academic journal, at least successfully and, and making it through publication. Um, and so I'll just give a few examples of this submitted from English Wikipedia. Um, uh, and so it's a mixture of, of medicine, science and humanities, unsurprisingly, um, of varying lengths um, and also very varying author counts. So some of these were, you know, 95% contributed to by a single author um, and others have been a real mix of authors. Uh, but what we always do is in the author list of submitting authors to the journal, we also include an et al, which hyperlinks to the full list of all contributors. And we do this in addition to kind of the standard Creative Commons requirement for attribution, where we also state on the in a right hand panel um, the actual text of you know the, the um, attribution of material from this is uh, is used and adapted from this Wikipedia page under this license. But the reason we kind of also included in the author list is that we decided that was kind of the most honest way to represent the work that was being done and is kind of inspired by the way that um, physics journals these days handle um, you know, academic articles that can have thousands of authors, particularly in particle physics. You know, there's there's papers with I think upwards of 2000 authors on them now. Um, in addition, we've published a range of either single image or image gallery articles. Um, and I think these are quite interesting. So some of these actually come uh, initially from Wikipedia. So like the structural model of bacteria phage T4. Um, I think these are kind of interesting because actually there is one place where original research is tolerated on Wikipedia and it's in the images. Um, commonly people are synthesizing multiple images uh, or schematics from other uh, from other places on the web of putting them together into their own images on Wikipedia. Um, uh, and sometimes it's basically flat out original research. And in this particular case, this um, uh, image of a particular virus uh, was completely original research and had been sitting on Wikipedia for multiple years uh, with no particular problems, but we thought that would be really good to put it through its paces in terms of um, academic peer review to show that actually that original um, structural model is, uh, is perfectly sound. Um, uh, the flip side to this, of course, is that sometimes articles will be submitted and uh, are not published. So um, in particular, the, these are two examples of uh, I think they're both, they were both good articles. One of them might have been a featured article. Um, but yeah, so these were both submitted to, um, to different wiki journals uh, and the peer reviewers found really significant problems with them that the author was either unable to or was unwilling to uh, address and so had to be declined from the journals. And in these cases, we just put a note on the talk page of the article, uh, noting that uh, some significant issues uh, at the talk page of the Wikipedia page, noting that some significant issues were also identified and that uh, the editors over there might want to check that out. Uh, we've also had a, um, our first case of an article being translated from another language and submitted, so in this case Arabic. Um, and so after going through um, the publishing process in the journal, it was then copied over into English language Wikipedia. Um, and I've mentioned this going the other way, uh, either for whole articles, so you know the entire Wikipedia page, like for the affine symmetric group, um, or for beak and feather disease virus. Although sometimes these are much narrower in scope. So uh, a particular article in the Wiki Journal of Medicine on epidemiology of hepatitis D virus uh, now uh, was copied over to be the epidemiology section of their hepatitis D virus Wikipedia page. Um, and also, as I've mentioned, more images, more image galleries um, uh, used across the encyclopedia. Um, in addition to this, we also have a large number of articles that are completely separate. They're not integrated into Wikipedia in any way, uh, and it's just 
standard research or uh, other articles. This ranges from research articles, uh, from teaching materials and case studies, um, uh, research protocols, um, and also I've mentioned review articles that are way more technical than you would um, uh, be able to easily integrate or way more technical or way more narrow focus than could logically have material directly integrated into Wikipedia. And so I've kind of um, hinted at the publishing workflow already, but essentially, uh, you know, a, a pre a, an author drafts an article on the preprint server, it then goes through public peer review, both public in the sense that anyone can view the process, but also public in the sense that anyone can also add a spontaneous review so that the editors of the journal will go out and specifically seek out experts to provide invited external reviews. But in addition to that, anyone is able to leave a spontaneous review during that um, process. Uh, and then if the authors are able to adequately address those, we publish that stable version, it gets assigned a DOI, it gets indexed in various um, uh, academic um, journal indices. So we're currently now, so, uh, it varies from journal to journal, but some of them are in PubMed Central, some of them are in Scopus, we're getting indexed, uh, we're applying for indexing in Web of Science, so that sort of thing. Um, and then obviously appropriate material is integrated into Wikipedia. Um, and unusually as a journal, we are happy to pipe in Wikipedia pages at the beginning of that kind of um, uh, pipeline. Um, and although this hasn't happened yet, uh, it's entirely possible that we can also sort of loop this round so that articles, if they've updated significantly since they last went through um, publication, it's entirely possible that we can version the articles in the same way that, say, textbooks are versioned. Um, so we have um, editors from all over the world, although unsurprisingly, like with much of Wikipedia, strongly focused in the global north, particularly uh, North um, America and Europe. Um, but there's lots of different ways that people can contribute if you're interested. So uh, obviously you're welcome to submit an article and we treat all articles completely equally, whether they're submitted by professors or students or people completely unaffiliated with um, universities or higher education at all. Uh, you're always welcome to have a look at our current list of articles in review um, and provide either technical um, comments if they're within your particular research area or even just um, comments on readability and clarity. Uh, obviously, please do spread the word. We have Twitter accounts, um, and we also have posters and video presentations available on Wikimedia Commons. So you can find those in the category of Wikijournal posters or Wikijournal presentations. Um, we also have, for, specifically for Wikijournal of Science, we published back in 2018 when we started up a, an editorial that just kind of summarizes a lot of what I've been talking about today. Um, so for people who prefer their uh, materials written, it's I think it's two or three pages, it's quite short. Um, if you come across a topic on Wikipedia that you think, wow, this page is really underdeveloped, it really needs someone to do a, a massive rewrite or an update of it, feel free to tell us the, the topic. Or if you know an academic and you're like, you know what, actually, they'd be really good at writing uh, an updated Wikipedia page on this insect or this mathematical process or whatever. Again, feel free to tell us about it or contact them directly and let them know about us. Uh, you're always welcome to help prepare submitted articles, and I suspect this, you guys are very familiar with this working with students. Uh, we end up onboarding a lot of um, first time Wikimedians, um, so it's often helpful to, to have assistance in um, sometimes reference formatting and sometimes other aspects. Um, and if you're particularly keen, join, uh, apply to join one of the editorial boards um, and get involved uh, more deeply. Um, so with that, I realized that I, I went for 20 minutes rather than the requested 15. Um, but if we have time for some questions, I'm always happy to answer. Thank you, Thomas. It, um, we did have one question in the chat, which is, are you sharing your slides somewhere? Hmm. Um, I do have basically a version of this slide deck available up on Wikimedia Commons, but I'll tell you what, I'll also stick in the um, uh, a share link to this exact um, 
presentation slide deck in the chat so you guys can distribute that around and you'll also get bonus slides at the end that I cut out. <laughs> Great. Any questions for Thomas? I know this is um, every time I talk with you, Thomas, I get more and more inspired by this project <laughs> and, um, and how cool it is. Um, is there anyone who has any other specific questions? Feel free to either unmute yourself or uh, put a question in the chat. Alex. Hi. Uh, wow, that was super cool. Um, I was wondering, do you notice anything about sort of like the level of technical language used between the uh, Wikipedia, well, going either direction, I guess, or whatever direction it passes through the feature films? Like, do you find that it tends to read more accessibly, or is that part of the recommendations, especially for first time Wikimedians? Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. So, we, um, I actually would say that we don't have a particular difference. And uh, I think that that's in part because even non Wikimedians who are, uh, if they're writing something that they know is meant to be in uh, kind of this broad format to subsequently become a Wikipedia page, I think people these days often have a subconscious just feel for what a, how a Wikipedia page reads. So they tend to mirror, I would say, quite closely the technicality level. Uh, the the far greater difference is between different disciplines like and this is well you know well um, noticed like the mathematics areas of wikipedia are far more technical um and dive into that technicality after the after the lead paragraph they dive into that technicality way faster um, than other subjects uh, and i think that the wiki journals probably reflect that scope a lot more um, the other thing actually that we have started doing more and more is asking authors to also, in addition to doing kind of that lead paragraph, to also write um, a non-technical summary. So to strip out all of the jargon and to strip out all of the technicality um, to write maybe 200 words. And actually we tend to copy those over into simple English Wikipedia as the summary over there. Very cool. We're getting lots of uh, reaction emojis in, um, in the Zoom chat here. Any, any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you so much, Thomas, especially for uh, getting up in the middle of the night. Um, we, we appreciate you joining us. <laughs> no worries at all. And I'm going to do the incredibly rude thing and apologize to, to the other speakers today, although I'm really interested in your talks. I'm going to do the... Uh, you, can the watch them on, you can watch them on the, the YouTube later and go back to sleep. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, <laughs> thank thanks you. Thanks very much, guys. Do you share really, the really link before talking. you go, though, Thomas? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Right. Um, Cheers, everybody. Okay. And uh, before uh, a before Amy and Amanda present, I did want to actually put a direct link in here to the um, the submission of the community tracks for WikidataCon. Um, and so, if you are doing something related to Wikidata and education, I heard that from a couple of participants during the introductions. Um, I would strongly encourage you to um, submit a session. We are doing acceptance on a rolling basis, so the deadline isn't yet, but um, as we get submissions in, we're accepting them and adding them to the schedule, and the, the schedule for this particular track is definitely filling up. Um, so if you have um, interest in submitting this, we're, we're definitely looking for more submissions, but we would encourage you to submit sooner rather than later. Um, so please do, uh, pl please do submit. There's a link um, at the bottom to um, for the, the submission uh, form, and I can actually just paste that directly into. It's the same software that was used for Wikimania if you submitted there. Um, okay, and with that, I will turn it over to Amanda and Amy. All right, wonderful. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Again, it's so nice to see you all. Um, and again, my name is Amanda Rust, based in Boston. You'll hear a lot about Boston today, so you might remember. If you remember nothing else, I think you will maybe remember Boston. Um, and Amy is sharing her screen. You'll hear from Amy later, so thank you. Um, and we are both in the Digital Scholarship Group, which is in the Northeastern University Library, uh, which is in Boston. <laughs> Amy is our data engineer, and I'm the Associate Director for Services. 
So I'm going to get us started. And uh, we're going to talk about how Wikidata fits into an initiative to collaboratively document neighborhood public art in Boston by focusing on public art outside of the more well-known downtown areas, we hope to highlight the history of art and artists in historically marginalized neighborhoods. So we're gonna talk about the process of setting up the Boston Neighborhood Public Art Project in Wikidata, um, including determining data models and creating a wiki project page. This is all Amy, really, you'll hear more from her, uh, and our hopes for future classroom use. Um, so Amy, if you could go to the next slide. Thank you. So this project is part of the Boston Research Center Initiative, or BRC, um, which is a digital community history and archives lab based in the Northeastern University Library. And I'm currently the BRC project director. And the BRC rests on the long work that our archives and special collections have done building collections and partnerships specifically with Boston area social justice organizations. So the BRC, my, my group, adds technical infrastructure and support around things like historical data, computational archives, methods, et cetera. And we focus on working with groups outside of Northeastern. So my short description for this is uh, we are tech support for local history. So next slide, please, Amy. There we go. So to understand the particular project that we're talking about today, I think we have to unpack the name a little, which is neighborhood public art. So you can kind of see these a little bit. To the left is a map of Boston from the city's planning division. Uh, and to the right is sort of that a blown up rectangle. And the part of Boston, like this happens in almost any city, right? The part of Boston that gets the most popular press, the part that's used in movies, the part that makes it into posters and tourism books is just a very small part of the city. It's the stuff in that little rectangle, um, sort of downtown area, back bay, <clears throat> some of the big parks, but that's it. And you can see how far Boston extends all around that. So when we say in the neighborhoods in Boston, particularly public art in the neighborhoods, it's a way of saying monuments and art in places that are not the Boston Common, that are not the Freedom Trail, that are not the sort of US, the kind of typical US revolutionary, very colonial viewpoint kind of history, right? So the neighborhoods is important. That's like an important key piece of this. And many of the neighborhoods have been historically marginalized and have not received the same kind of investment in art that the downtown areas have. Um, this is changing, especially in the last 10 to 20 years, but uh, that doesn't make up for long-term recurring disinvestment. So our team, the BRC team, is of course not the only group in the city focused on this topic, topic um, public art data. We are actually relatively recent to the conversation, and we started this project through work with a donor to our library's special collections who has been interested in tracking public art data in Boston for more than a decade, I think closer to 15 years. She's been doing this on her own um, and through some city offices. So the city is also tracking data about public art. Other university researchers are doing this. Um, arts nonprofits and advocacy groups want to do this with the end goal of generally gathering data to make a more equitable city and celebrate art and artists across all of our neighborhoods. So next slide, please, Amy. So in talking to, and here you can um, you can see sort of two, two murals as an example from the Boston area. In talking to different potential partners about how to create and gather this data, we found that no one local repository of images or information or data was the right answer. Centralizing all of this work and energy from across the city in just one organization's database was not possible, not desirable <laughs> for most people, right? And many people have been thinking about equitable public art in Boston longer than us. And so wanted to, needed to keep doing their local project the way that they need. So we wanted to figure out Northeastern's role in this. Um, and I think you can imagine where we're going. We figured out that our role, because we have some pretty long standing experience with English Wikipedia, um, our role is facilitating standardization and aggregation in a third space where everyone can modify and contribute information about public art. So, you know, if only there was a separate multilingual global place to standardize and share statements about public art in Boston. So enter Wikidata. Um, and this gives us a open data store where we or anyone else can develop services 
through either the API or the Sparkle query service. For example, one of our long-term BRC goals is to help some of our potential partners come up with an easy system to create local walking tours. There's lots of ways to do this with apps on your phone, but there's often a lot of technical infrastructure that has to happen first. So pie in the sky dreams, right? Can we make that easier with Wikidata as, uh, as the shared backbone across the city? So I will turn it over now to Amy to give more details and um, talk to y'all a little bit at the end when we talk about our classroom hopes and dreams. Okay, uh, great. So yeah, I think Amanda touched on some of these a bit, but just expanding on like why we're using Wikidata for this project. So on the more technical side, um, we have the structural capabilities of Wikidata, which let us capture more complex information than we could just, you know, in some of the spreadsheets we already have, and also offer more flexibility than like a relational database in terms of, you know, the schemas from which you model stuff. Uh, one aspect of Wikidata that's particularly appealing, especially in this con context, is the ability to add references to each statement. Um, so, you know, we can track, being able to track sources at such a granular, granular level should um, serve as a good starting point for them creating well-cited Wikipedia articles about these works, but also allows us to capture conflicting information from multiple sources, which I think is something we're going to encounter more and more in particular when it comes to like the installation dates of a piece. Um, we can also take advantage of work that's already been done in Wikidata and link to existing items and then build up this connected world of knowledge about Boston neighborhood public art. So that it's not just the works and their artists, but also, you know, art schools that people went to, activist organizations they participated in and more. Um, there are some visualization tools bundled with the Wikidata query service that make it easy to get these initial maps and graphs uh, to show off to potential partners and funders as proof of concept um, while we you know, work on building our own customized tools. Um, and you know, the major reason, again, as Amanda touched on, is to invite larger community participation in this project. Um, so rather than having all this in a database that only a few people can access and edit, um, putting this data into Wikidata is a way to share it more widely for people to reuse however they want and also invite people to contribute and enrich what we have with what they know. Um, so, So I was just going to highlight some of the steps involved um, in getting started with a Wikidata project from our experience. Um, so probably the most important step was just deciding on initial data models to use. Um, so for us, this meant looking at the data we already had in spreadsheets and figuring out what types of entities to add to Wikidata based on that. Um, so we are focused on works of art, individual artists. Someone else approaching this project could decide to set up distinct models for murals versus sculptures versus commemorative plaques rather than having one model for all types of works. Um, but for our context, this seems simpler. Um, we then looked at how these entities were already being modeled in Wikidata by performing some exploratory queries, uh, by searching for relevant Wiki projects. Um, so there was already a wiki project public art and their data model seemed pretty reasonable for our use case, um, so we've mostly just been following that. Um, so then we created a mapping between the columns we already had in spreadsheets and wiki data properties with some usage notes, um, cleaned and merged our spreadsheets accordingly. Um, and did some initial bulk uploads of the items to Wikidata uh, via the Wikidata extension for OpenRefine. Um, and I will share all these links in the chat later, I guess. Um, but there's some good documentation on Wikidata about uh, how to use that OpenRefine extension. Um, and then we created the Neighborhood Public Art in Boston Wiki project page to document our models, track what we've uploaded so far, and outline tasks that still need to be completed. 
and I'm working on moving as much of our workflow documentation as makes sense from like our internal Google Drive to the Wiki project page uh, so that our process is completely transparent and invites feedback. Um, another aspect of starting a Wiki project page meant that we could create a Wiki data item that corresponds to that project page and tag things as being on that project's focus list, which helps a lot with sort of this tracking um, items and patrolling for vandalism. Uh, okay, so I was gonna go out to some links to show what this all looks like. Um, hopefully you can see that. Um, <laughs> So here is our um, wiki project page. Um, so you can see we have this initial list of tasks for potential contributors um, and some uh, resources uh, for researching public art in Boston. And we're planning to expand uh, this with some more bibliographic resources at some point. Um, on the discussion page, I have some initial and so far unanswered questions about how we should go about modeling certain things um, and some, you know, example queries, both for practical work planning tasks and to show off what we have so far. Um, in the data model tab, we have all these uh, different lists of recommended properties to include for different types of entities. Um, so if you're used to editing Wikidata, there shouldn't be anything really novel there, but I thought it would be a good starting point for anyone who isn't super um, experienced there. Um, and then we have list of works with all the works um, on our focus list. Um, and so a few of those already existed in Wikidata and we just tag them, but mostly they're items we've added over the past few months. Um, so if anyone uh, has feedback about the comprehensibility of the project page or ideas for other research questions that we could build example queries around, uh, please let us know. Um, and now for some of the fun stuff. Um, so here are some of the visualizations we can produce with the um, existing tools. Uh, so Here's a map just with the built-in um, mapping option in the Wikidata query service. So you can you know, zoom into an area and see all the works there and click on a work and get some more information about it. Like the formatting is not great, which is why we're gonna build our own tools, but I think it's a cool low effort starting point. Um, you can get this sort of network visualization of all the connections between items on our focus list that is worth exploring, I think, on your own time and finding cool little clusters there. Um, and then using Histopedia, you can get this sort of basic timeline with filtering and color coding options. So I can, you know, filter down to all the works in South End and color code them by, you know, what type of work of art they are. Um, okay, so, right. So some of the challenges we've run into so far, um, which could talk for ages about, but, so we initially thought that because these are uh, works of art in public spaces, we could just upload a bunch of photos to Wikimedia Commons and link to them via the image property in the Wikidata item and then have those images enrich all of our visualizations. Um, and if we were like in Canada, uh, we could for <laughs> most of the objects, uh, but US copyright law is more restrictive um, so works installed prior to 1978 um, it, are probably public domain, uh, but later works wouldn't be, and we're mostly interested in those later works. Um, so we still sort of need to figure out how to connect our Wikidata items to images of the works if we can't host those images in commons. Um, citing our sources. So these spreadsheets we were initially working from um, we're part of the materials uh, from the donor Amanda mentioned. So they're sort of archival material, 
uh, but they haven't yet been processed or uploaded to our digital repository, so we can't really reference them as such from Wikidata. Um, some of the information can be verified from like other websites or news articles, but the rest, um, you know, might only exist in internal memos or flyers um, or other materials that we can't really point to. So that's also still TBD. <laughs> um, the specific public art modeling questions that I mentioned um, that are still unanswered. Um, so for example, how do we handle replicas? So when we have a case where like the original work of art was stolen or destroyed or moved, and then what is in that location is a reproduction of that, you know, how are we going to handle that in Wikidata? How do we deal with uncertain end dates? So when we know that a mural no longer exists, but we don't have any record of when exactly it was taken down. Um, what even counts as public art, you know, uh, all sorts of questions there. Um, spotting and dealing with vandalism. Uh, so there is this recent changes tool that I linked to in an earlier slide, um, but still wondering if there's a better process than using that to sort of monitor items for vandalism and thinking about how worried we should be about vandalism on items that aren't on our focus list, but are used as values and statements. So for example, if someone goes in and changes like the English label of mural to some nonsense, like it'll make a lot of our items look weird. Um, and you know, how much of that can we really deal with? <laughs> um, and then finally getting wider community participation, just, uh, figuring out how we get people interested, willing, and able to contribute to this project. Um, and now I'll hand it back to Amanda. Okay, great. So um, we wanted to sort of, yeah, wrap up with what we think of as the hopes and dreams slide. Um, and I think you're all, um, you're all educators, right? You can probably sort of see some of the potential here already, um, but some of our, we get to work with the Boston Public Library quite a bit, which is awesome. And so they've already had a music focused edit a -thon. Um, They came up with, you know, some for them really successful models for letting people enter info either in spreadsheets or in wiki data and kind of being able to upload it later and show progress to attendees. So we're definitely hoping to do things like that. Um, and I think the the power of this in the classroom, at least for me so far, is that it's um, it can be a very small manageable research project, right? As folks have have worked, obviously in teaching with Wikipedia, there's often a, a sort of writing element that is very important for a Wikipedia article, um, but that can sometimes be a hurdle for students or just may not be part of what the focus of your class is. So Wikidata really lets you parcel out very specific targeted research projects. Go find out if you can, you know, when this piece was installed. Can you find out um, what art school this particular artist went to? Can you find out, you know, uh, where this piece was moved to, right? So you can be really targeted. Um, and I think, and, and I noticed Clara mentioning some things in, um, the chat too. I think the visualization tools um, are are so powerful because they give such beautiful immediate gratification. So you know you can easily imagine a, a semester project where students add information and it shows up on the timeline almost right away or literally right away, right? So I think that's um, emotionally a very sort of compelling kind of assignment for students. Um, and you know, for us, there's also the possibility to build connections from Wikidata items to special collections with us also at the BPL, also at the city archives, right? The stuff is just scattered everywhere. Um, again, as I'm sure you all know with other projects and um, long-term, you know, we're definitely looking at, um, because our group is very lucky to have access to some programmers, Amy has skills in those areas. We, uh, we also have others that do, is sort of building out um, custom visualizations that we would hope to do open source and share with folks, but building out custom tools focused on what our community partners really need. So my pitch right now, check with us in a year and see how we're doing, but my pitch to our potential partners outside of the university is, here's a place where we can bring all our stuff together. Your stuff sits, 
you know, in its base home, but we're going to kind of aggregate it and bring it together here. Once we have this pool of data, then we can build these custom tools on top, really focused on like what arts organization A needs or what the city archives needs in another area. Again, uh, some of these, you know, check back with us um, in a year. So I think that is everything that we have, unless I have forgotten anything, Amy. And if not, um, we're open for questions or whatever is next. Well, thank you, Amy and Amanda. That was a really cool project. And I look forward to seeing where it is in a year. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can uh, invite you back to, to share an update in uh, next, uh, next October. Um, are there any questions? It looks like Clara had a question that you already answered, Amanda. Um, I guess maybe a comment more. I'm Go ahead. I'm excited by this. Uh, because we are trying to, um, when I, because I have uh, been worked in a museum for eight years mm -hmm. before I ended here. Uh, so I'm really close to these uh, subjects and I, uh, we are also trying now to introduce new strategy in our educational strategy in Wikimedia Polska connected to museums because we have so many partners now and so on. Uh, not only like one uh, project to put photos to Wikimedia Commons, but also make something more. So I really have to uh, go to Wikidata. I can see another <laughs> way to move it on, just not to make another lesson plan and so on and so on. Um, and uh, thank you uh, for this uh, tutorial because I have been to many, many workshops and I think maybe I'm too, uh, you know, like, literature center person I don't know because I I remember I try I practice and then I forgot everything uh, so maybe it will help me but also we have some volunteers to make it but our on the, the first level we are trying for example to make these labels on all museums in Poland yes like to make it in uh, some our language English language and so on and create a new queue so uh, it, uh, I, I could see that even this was very satisfying for all the students, that they create something and when you uh, turn on this um, gadget in Wikipedia, you can see uh, about the article that it has Wikidata or not, yes? So they could see, wow, thanks to me, it has this queue, <laughs> yeah? Uh, so this, I, I, I wanted to share with you that this is very, maybe small something, and uh, you don't have to do the sparkle thing, but uh, yeah, something you can do. Yeah. But I promise I will try more. Thank you. I, I wonder too, um, part of Amy's work has also been working with um, just not just, but all these spreadsheets we have. And I think we're totally open to workflows where students might work in a spreadsheet and just we do the work of the upload and transformation um, because that is I think a very simple um, on-ramp a very straightforward on-ramp for this yeah thank you and Claire don't feel bad about uh, not getting the the query service I definitely I mean I, I know it but then I don't use it for a while and I come back to it it, it takes me a while to I get back into, into what yeah, I'm doing have, if you see my nickname I have my uh, yeah, yeah, uh, my input into Wikidata as well as in Wikipedia <laughs> so I'm okay uh, Joao do you have a question Yes, I do. So thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amanda. It was a really beautiful presentation, very moving about the way that we can actually use Wikidata to uh, or to some extent to organize and to curate our very own neighborhoods. I found it really, really powerful. And I was wondering what exactly the, the expectation of crowdsourcing is for this project, because as I was looking at the page, I see that it's um, in the data model, it's uh, more or less about descriptive uh, statements on the mural. But I guess uh, when you get more community involved, you might eventually want to reach a higher level of contribution, uh, talking about, you know, 
uh, I don't know, the perspectives of something that is really important for me, the decolonization, decolonization that are uh, seen intersectionalities that are represented, something that is more on the symbolic angle of the art that you are coming up. Though I understand the, the organizing of, uh, of the public art uh, is already really impressive. So this is just one thing. And I was wondering how you think this crowdsourcing uh, could be made because I, I can imagine that as you, you, uh, you become more familiar or you engage more in research about what, what is public art and these really hard conceptual things, you come up with uh, new understandings of modeling. They are not just these very basic statements of describing public arts from, a, I don't know, uh, 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 I don't know, it exists to uh, some extent, stamp and a more interpretative and let's say, uh, critical way of understanding this art. Yeah, sorry, I can give a super brief answer and I'm sure Amanda has a lot more to say on this. Um, so I know one aspect that we were talking about early on that I think will work in eventually is like collecting oral histories about pieces, which while those can't be like directly put into wiki data, there is an oral history at property, I think, or something like that, so that you can link out from the wiki data item to that. And I think the sort of more high level dis interpretation you're talking about, wiki data might not be the place for it, but you know, we can try to figure out how to connect the items to where that lives elsewhere. Yeah, and I'll just add, I, um, I, I love, oh, oral histories. <laughs> I just saw your note in the chat. Um, I, this is such a great question because I think in some ways, as I sort of gestured to in the presentation, a lot of the people interested in this data are interested in it from this, this sort of equitable standpoint, right? Um, and for example, you can already see in, in some of the um, historically marginalized and um, lower socioeconomic neighborhoods, there's a lot more temporary art and murals. There are not um, brass statues, right? Like it's just a, and you might expect that sadly, but it's a really obvious difference in what kinds of art are supported in what neighborhoods. So to a certain extent, we're trying to provide the framework. Um, but I think your question about the interpretive level is, is right on. You know, there's, I think, a little you can start to do maybe with the depicts statement, but even that is not really interpretive in the same way, but you can start to kind of make, um, you can start to draw conclusions about who is depicted where. Um, and you can already see a little bit of that in, in what we've put in there. Um, but I just think that's a great question. I have no good answer. <laughs> like where the kind of like my impulse is kind of like what Amy said. I don't know that Wikidata has a space for this, but maybe that means there's a new property. I don't know. Um, but I, I think some of that long term, I think people are definitely interested in, as are a lot of places, but in Boston, definitely interested in that sort of question of what is depicted and what materials are being used, right? Like who are you depicting in temporary public art? Who are you depicting in permanent public art, for example? Hey, Jackie. Oh, thank you. And, and congratulations. This is an, an exciting project, really. And really, congratulations. Thanks, thanks for bringing this information. And I was just um, wondering about this uh, game called Ingress that I don't know if you have played, the Niantic uh, project. And it's great because you can go outside and walk and discover. And I've been finding out things in my neighborhood that never, ever. Maybe a crowdsource. Uh, project with them will be good. I mean, it's a parallel gamification activity with the data you have or cross-referencing data with them. Have you thought about that? No, but thank you. I know our, um, our university archivist um, loves Niantic and Ingress because I think Mm, this is very and a very unreliable statement. Flag it as unreliable. Um, but I, I think they actually worked with um, a group in Boston on a local history project and kind of came up with a little sort of app. But yeah, that kind of place-based 
either find the thing or ask questions about the thing um, is just such an amazing, is such a great idea. Yeah. Thank you. I will say Boston, a lot of cities might have this too. Boston has what's called a 311 system, which is like a non-emergency reporting. And a lot of people have the app on their phone and you can say, you know, um, this fence blew down, somebody needs to come move the fence. And um, very, very long term, some of our BPL partners had said, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we could somehow um, do um, initiatives with the 311 reporting service where it's like, you know, take a picture of a new painted electrical box in your neighborhood and submit it. And again, and this is in the hopes and dreams slide, but I love that idea too. Thank you both so much. Any other questions? Hearing none, um, the only other thing um, was, would you be willing to share your slides? Um, and particularly with Clara, who had to leave, she put her uh, email address in the chat there, if you could um, share them with her as well. Um, but yeah, thank you both for your presentation. This was um, super inspiring and interesting, and I am looking forward to see how it comes out uh, in the coming months. So, and yes, we hope to see you at Wikidatacon. Um, please do uh, participate. Sijua is, is doing a better job than I am as the, <laughs> the co-curator of my track and, and plugging it repeatedly where I should be doing that. Um, but thank you for the reminder, Shua. Um, but yes, everyone else too, as you have uh, Wikidata works or projects that you're doing, uh, this is a great opportunity uh, to share them with the broader Wikidata community as well. Okay, and with that, I will stop the recording.